We are about to begin our discussion over the Bill of Rights. Instead of beginning with the First Amendment, we will begin with the Ninth Amendment. I am of the opinion that the Ninth Amendment is one of the most important amendments to the Constitution. In fact, I believe it is the second most important amendment to the Constitution, right behind the Fourteenth Amendment. When the Anti-Federalists proposed that a Bill of Rights be added to the new Constitution, not everybody was on board. The Federalists felt that this would be dangerous. In fact, they said you would be giving to the government more authority than it now claimed. In Federalist number 84, Alexander Hamilton, my favorite founding father by the way, argued that Bill of Rights are not only unnecessary in the proposed Constitution, but would even be dangerous. Other Federalists warned that later interpreters might assert that the people had surrendered any rights omitted from the enumeration. Let me explain this. What the Federalists were saying was that it would be impossible to list all the natural rights afforded to man. Later interpreters of the Constitution could come along and say, we will recognize the rights listed in the Constitution, but rights that were omitted from the Constitution, we will not recognize. Meaning, the freedoms of Americans would be limited. This type of government would be the antithesis to the type of government argued by John Locke. Everyone in here should be familiar with John Locke. He was the English natural rights theorist. He believed that the principal justification for founding a government is to make sure that the rights of man are more secure than they would be in a state of nature. To a later fears of the Federalists, James Madison would propose an amendment which stated the exceptions here are elsewhere in the Constitution made in favor of particular rights shall not be construed as to diminish the just importance of other rights retained by the people or as to enlarge the powers delegated by the Constitution, but either as actual limitations of such powers or as inserted merely for greater caution. This statement would later be reduced to simply state the enumeration in the Constitution of certain rights shall not be construed to deny or disparage others retained by the people. And this is what the Ninth Amendment simply states. In my opinion, the Ninth Amendment, in my opinion, the Ninth Amendment is a bulwark against zealots who want to force their ideas on others. As we know, throughout human history, there have been people who tried to force their moral ideas on others, which have always been dangerous. Since its inclusion into the Constitution, many have interpreted the meaning of the Ninth Amendment. There are those who have taken the presumption of constitutionality approach. People who accept this idea believe that the government actions should be upheld unless it violates an identifiable fundamental right. I disagree with this. This in the end would limit the rights of man. Basically what this is saying is that if the rights are listed in the Constitution, the federal government have to grant these rights to the people. If it's not in the Constitution, then the government does not have to recognize these rights. I tend to support the presumption of liberty approach when understanding the Ninth Amendment. Under this approach, it is believed that man has the right to do what he wants as long as it does not interfere with the rights of others. It also states that the only time a government can regulate the actions of its citizens is when it can show that such regulations was essential or necessary to achieve some proper governmental end. Once again, in my opinion, this protects us from zealotry. The Ninth Amendment has been used 
to decide many Supreme Court cases. For example, in 1965, the Supreme Court would rely on the Ninth Amendment to decide Griswold versus Connecticut. Now let me give you a little background history to the Griswold case. In the state of Connecticut, you had state legislatures who wanted to limit a woman's access to contraceptives. They passed a law stating that if a doctor aided a woman in obtaining contraceptives, he could be fined or even put in jail. Those in the state legislature were trying to enforce their moral views on others. They actually want to control the sexual activities of married women. When the case finally made it to the Supreme Court, when they decided the Griswold case, the justices, mainly Justice Goldberg, stated that there are some rights that are fundamental. And the Ninth Amendment protects those rights that are not listed in the Constitution. He was relying on the Ninth Amendment. Even though the Constitution does not state that a woman has a right to use contraceptives, it is a natural right that no state has the right to abridge. The state does not have the right to control our marital activities. They do not have the right to invade the marital bedroom. And because of the Ninth Amendment, there is a presumption of some privacy afforded to American citizens. So the Ninth Amendment was crucial in deciding a case in which a state legislature felt they had the right to deny women a fundamental right of using contraceptives. Another case in which everyone in this classroom should be familiar with is Lawrence versus Texas, which was decided in 2003. This case involved two men in Houston, Texas, being arrested because they were homosexuals and having sex in their apartment. Now, keep in mind, in Texas you can be a homosexual, but at one time you could not be a homosexual in Texas and engage in sexual activity. Well, two men were arrested in their apartment while engaging in sexual activity. The case would make it all the way to the Supreme Court. One of the arguments Texas tried to make was that the Constitution does not give people the right to engage in sodomy. While this is true, the Supreme Court reasoned that there are certain liberties that should be afforded to its citizenry, even if it is not stated in the Constitution. And Justice Kennedy reasoned that engaging in sexual activities was a fundamental right, even if it's not listed in the Constitution. He would go on to say that homosexuals should have the natural freedom to express their love towards one another. And the state does not have the right to interfere. Once again, the Ninth Amendment was used to decide a case and prevent a state from overstepping its bounds. In another case, Richard, in another case, Richmond Newspapers versus Virginia, 1980. The state tried to prevent the press from being present during a jury trial. A plurality of the court reasoned that the state has a right to try a defendant. That is stated in the Constitution. But it does not mean that it can exclude the press. So even though it does not say that the press must be present at a jury trial, the Supreme Court reasoned that that's a right that should be afforded to the people. 
In fact, I think it ensures more fairness in our court system. So once again, the Ninth Amendment was used to justify the press being present at jury trials. And there are other cases in which the Ninth Amendment was used. Just imagine all the natural rights that would be abridged if we did not have the Ninth Amendment. Rights that you now take for granted would not exist. So the Ninth Amendment is one of those amendments you should fully understand. And you will also come to understand why the Founding Fathers were very insightful and wise men. Okay, let's shift gears and start talking about the First Amendment.